Governor Paul Johnson, 90. Oh, you on the attorney general in there? Yes, sir. He's on the other line. Tell him that I'm talking on that call now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Just ready, sir. Hello, Governor. Hello. Governor. Yes. Lyndon Johnson. Yes, sir, Mr. Turpin. How are you? Fine. Hope you are. Get along fine. Thank you. Uh, I was talking to Jim Eastland this afternoon, and he told me uh, after he talked to you, he called me back and said that you had, uh, uh, you were deeply concerned about this situation as I was. And yes, we've been doing everything that we possibly could to solve it. And he said that it's possible. He said you had suggested that uh, uh, be glad if I had to send an impartial, objective observer down to talk to you, so you could tell them what you were doing and uh, see uh, themselves what all was happening. That's exactly what the situation is. And I'll tell you what I thought. I thought that, uh, I think that's a good idea. And I asked Alan Dulles, who's a, a, a brother, you know, of the uh, former Secretary of State and a very able man, uh, to fly down there and told him that uh, you had uh, asked uh, us to do that. Uh, I told it to, and I, I'm going to ask him to go down there tomorrow or next day, and I'll, I'll have him uh, if you notice beforehand, right. um, I want him to talk to you and any people that you suggest uh, that might be desirable for him to talk to. Send him to anyone that you think he ought to see, any local right. officials or state officials. Wants to go. Or state officials. And I think he also ought to, before he comes back, see some of the Negro uh, groups so that uh, he can uh, hear anything they've got to say or talk to them. I think he ought to talk to the FBI people at the end there. Uh, I'm deeply concerned about uh, uh, this situation, as I know you are. Yes, the real danger in it, uh, Mr. President, is uh, these youngsters who come into a situation where you already have a hardcore uh, group of people with long police records uh, that are professional agitators. Mm -hmm. And these youngsters don't realize what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been in here a good while, and they've stirred up a great deal of tension. And uh, now these youngsters come in when the tension is getting toward the boiling point. Uh, on this matter of the bath of these three that have disappeared, we've had investigators in there, of course, since yesterday morning, uh, checking it out. Then we have, of course, our people over there at the scene of this automobile, and I have been in touch with the FBI uh, resident agent, or the district agent, minor, down in New Orleans. And my people and his have been working very closely together. Yes, he, uh, Edgar Hoover told me that a couple right. of times. Sir. No. And then I told him that uh, I thought that uh, our people should get with his group and make a decision as to whether or not that big swamp should be searched. And if they needed to do so, or determine that was the thing to do right away, that we would be glad to furnish uh, some additional personnel to get in there and to search that swamp out. Uh, I frankly don't think that they will find them anyway, except perhaps in another part of this country. Uh, from what we could determine, uh, looked like that they went out of there on foot to the highway. It was only about a hundred yards away. So uh, From the car? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a tremendous swamp in there, particularly on the south part of the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would take a large number of men to really scour that swamp closely. Mm -hmm. But we're willing to do it if they feel that that would, you know, be beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, you issued a statement this afternoon, didn't you? That's correct. What did you say in that statement? Well, in that statement, uh, and incidentally, the CBS crowd were there and filmed it. Mm -hmm. uh, I said that my people had been in there on assignment since yesterday morning, that I had not received any official notice or request uh, to search for these people or to run this down until last night. But despite that, the, as quick as we heard about it yesterday morning, 
uh, we sent investigators over. And then we uh, also alerted our patrol units over in that area to be on the lookout also. And that uh, the car had been found, that it was in the swamp uh, about 12 miles uh, northeast of Philadelphia, that it was on the north side of the highway in the Overture Swamp, about 100 yards off the highway. Uh, that the FBI agents uh, were there on the scene, uh, that some of our personnel were there on the scene, that there were no bodies uh, found in the car, and that the area had been roped off, uh, that these personnel, uh, I felt certain, would not be permitted in the area until uh, an investigation had probably been carried out by the FBI and by our state investigators and by the local sheriff. And that uh, every effort was being made uh, through a coordinated uh, movement uh, between all three of the law enforcement branches to see that the ends of justice were met. Mm. That was more or less the statement. Mr. Hoover told me that you'd made it and it pleased me very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, we want to cooperate with you in any way in the world that we can. We know what a uh, problem it is, and uh, we want to make available all the facilities that the federal government has that we can to you and work uh, uh, work with all of our people there uh, and our equipment to uh, uh, try to locate these boys. Now, CBS has got out a report that uh, uh, they'd located the bodies and uh, they found the bodies. You know anything about that? know nothing whatsoever about that, and if that were true, uh, the investigators over there would have contacted me immediately. I believe so. Uh, CBS called, say, the student bodies had been found. Uh -huh. I don't know whether I just got that since I started talking to you. No, I, we do not know if they have. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't found out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll certainly be delighted to give you a ring or to give someone that you may designate. Boy, well, just a ring. minute. Hoover's calling us on the other phone now. Let me see what uh, what he says. Uh, this uh, CBS man says that it's a uh, unconfirmed report from a UPI stringer at Jackson. Uh -huh. UPI still has not carried the story. No. Mm -hmm. I feel that if they had located the bodies that they would have notified me immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents were down. I've got to say something at night and I don't want to uh, I want to contribute to a solution and not add to a problem. Okay. Uh, you see what the big problem is down here? is this. Uh, suppose we had a uh, half million marshals in here. You could not have prevented such a thing as happened in this particular instance. It's an isolated proposition that could happen anywhere in the state because of its size and because of the wooded areas and because of the fact that it is a rural state with a lot of small communities. And uh, you're going to have this sort of a thing in New York City or anywhere else. It's a matter of when these things do happen that we run them to earth and bring them to justice. Mm -hmm. But uh, this sort of thing could not have been prevented regardless of what anyone had done. Uh, that's our big problem here, and it would be in Texas or Arkansas or anywhere else. Yes, that's right now. But you can have a... a individual incident or isolated incident like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we're going to have a long summer, and as I said before, uh, yes, it is. We, I'm deeply concerned about uh, what's going to happen day to day, and I think it's just imperative that uh, uh, we work together as closely as we can and all the resources of the state and right. the local people and the, uh, the folks that we have uh, be put together to try to see if the law is observed and well, uh, see if we can avoid that. any violence. We have been doing that uh, 
for about six months, and we just kept the lid on this thing. Uh, how we've done it, I don't know. But uh, we've kept it all suppressed. And uh, I've just looked for the dynamite keg to go off in a minute, you know, and me sitting on it. But we have, uh, I think, the FBI agents and any of uh, your people here in the state will tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm that we've made a tremendous effort to try to keep the people calm, and so far they have been. There's been no demonstrations at all. Well, I want to tell you that uh, what I said before, that I'm very pleased with your statement, that I appreciate your invitation to have this objective observer. I'm going to send Mr. Dulles. I'll notify you when he comes. I'm very anxious to repeat, uh, anxious to cooperate with you and the local people and all the facilities I have available are available for that purpose. The governor will come and talk to you and any people that you desire to talk to, and I'd suggest that you uh, uh, figure out various parts of the state to any people you think uh, could give him helpful suggestions and uh, report on what's happening so we can get a pretty complete picture. Uh, give him any guidance you can on any of the leaders of the uh, that you think you might ought to talk to to get to uh, all sides of the picture. We'll, he'll talk to the FBI people who are familiar, as you suggest, and uh, uh, then I'll, I want him to come back and uh, uh, give me some information because they're picketing us tomorrow and uh, say that we're not taking the steps we ought to and uh, so forth. So we want to be sure that we do everything we possibly can consistent with uh, uh, getting results. But regardless of, of what had been done, Mr. President, uh, an incident like this cannot be obviated anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the world. And uh, those people uh, who do criticize, they realize that. But uh, they are just trying to stir up a storm. You know? Well, we've got to, we've got to uh, put everything we've got behind it because the summer is going to be a long and a difficult one, Governor, and I know how you feel about it and you know my problem too, and let's just uh, work together as closely as we can, and my my phone's always ready for you, and uh, I'll consider yours the same way, and we'll be back well, in touch with each other. Fine, and I do appreciate you calling me. So Thank you. Much. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. And anything that you think that I can do well, uh, to help suppress this situation, I wish you'd let me know. I'll, I'll sure do it, and I just hope you appeal to all of them to continue as you did today to uh, observe the law and everybody uh, follow it and uh, let's have no violence. That's, that's fine. We will reply. Thank you.